America's number one independent television network presents the following sports exclusive. This is Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida, where today a crowd of close to 50,000 people is waiting to see not a football game, but America's fastest growing sport, professional soccer. And TVS is here today for the game which should be the most significant step in the growth of professional soccer in the United States. TVS presents NASL Championship Soccer. NASL Championship Soccer is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller Highlights. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by the people in your town who also bring you the bright, refreshing taste of Coca-Cola. Coke adds life to just about everything you do. And by Toyota. You ask for soccer, you got it. Thanks to Toyota, makers of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, the official car of the NASL. Electricity is here at Tampa Stadium in Florida. This stadium today, the focal point of the world of sports. Yes, the eyes of the world are on Tampa Stadium as we have a big, big soccer game. That's right, a soccer game. Our first of seven telecasts on TVS. I'm John Miller. I'll be calling the play-by-play -play for you today. A big day for us at TVS, but an even bigger day for not only soccer in the United States, but the world of soccer. A big, big crowd here today and for perhaps the first time in history, three of the biggest stars in the world playing on the same team. All of that going on here today at Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida. We'll be back in just a moment to meet our guest analyst for the ball game today and also take a look at some of those big, big stars when we return after this. play-by-play -play announcer for these TBS telecasts of NASL Championship Soccer. It's my good fortune to be working with some of the most knowledgeable people in soccer in this country, and today I think we're starting at the top. Our guest analyst is perhaps the greatest brain in soccer in the United States. He is treated as thus, as he has been named the coach of the U.S. World Cup team and also the coach of the U.S. Olympic team. His name, Walt Chisowitz. And Walt, it's nice to have you here, and the two ball clubs, a lot of superstars, uh, what do they have? 
Now, thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here and to work with you to see this game. Some of the great players of the world are here. New York Cosmos are featuring Pelé, the great player around the world from Brazil. He'll do the planning and the scheming for the Cosmos. Another great player just acquired Tuesday will be in the Cosmos uniform, Franz Beckenbauer, the Kaiser, the captain of the West German World Champion team. He'll be here and he'll be playing for the Cosmos. The goal getting will be provided by Giorgio Cina, together from Italy. He'll do all the scoring for the New York Cosmos, hopefully. On the other hand, Eddie Fermani plans to counter with some great players as well. Rodney Marsh, the free-spirited player from England, he'll do the planning and the scheming for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. A great goal getter for the Tampa Bay Rowdies, Derek Smithers, will provide all the scoring punch that's needed for Tampa. This should be a, one of the most exciting games in the history of the NASL. Well, indeed, it should. We've got the great superstars, the big names. We've got the great scores and an important game. Walt, how do you view it? Well, it's very difficult to predict, but I can see only that the New York Cosmos will play with a lot of possession. They want to hold the ball, exhibition their technique. On the other hand, I think that the Tampa Bay Rowdies will play with a lot of counterattacks, and probably because of the younger team that they are, they'll try to run more than the Cosmos. All right, Walt Chiswitz. We'll be back with the opening kickoff of this big one from Tampa, Florida, after this. the officials for today's game in the middle referee Bob Mathewson and he is flanked by the two linesmen on the left Fred Usher and on the right Bob Evans and of course in soccer the referee responsible for all calls the linesmen really just to to help out they'll be flanking him on either side of the field with little yellow flags and if they spot something usually an offsides infraction then they'll raise that flag John Miller, Walt Chiswitz with you, and we're really excited about this one as you've got two of the best teams in America and really the Cosmos now with Pele, Beckenbauer, Kinalia. Uh, rarely, if ever, has the world seen a lineup with so many luminaries in it at the same time, Walt. John, this is incredible. I've never been exposed to this kind of entertainment my whole life. I'm so excited. I'm ready to go out on the field and play myself. Beckenbauer, Pelé, Canale on one side. Rodney Marsh, P Derek Smethers on the other side. Auguste from Haiti, a, a world-class player as well. All these players are out there today. I think we figured out sometime this morning about nine players in the ballgame who've had World Cup experience, which is as high a level as you can go in the world of soccer. The Tampa Bay Rowdies, they are the leaders of the Eastern Division. They are in white, and they have the ball. The Cosmos, who are right now in third place in the division, needing a victory today to put themselves back up near the top of the division in probably the toughest division in the North American Soccer League. Cosmos have it in the green shirts. Werner Roth, number four, the center back, brings the ball into the Tampa side of the field. Now here's George Kinalia. The ball tackle away from him. And here comes Tampa. Derek Smethurst, number 12, who already is among the top scorers in league history, 12th in league history. On the right wing side, they go to Steve Wegerly. Into the corner to Smethurst. The ball knocked away. Nelson Moraes, number 14, was down there, along with Dylan, number 20, of the Cosmos defense, and they caused the Rowdies to lose the ball. 
this is basically what we'll see all day. The Cosmos are going to fall back, delay, and allow the Tampa Bay Rowdies to come up in the attack. And then we want to quickly counterattack with a lot of possession, as we can see now. Here come the Cosmos now into the attack. Ball is cleared away from Tony Field, the right wing, but New York has it again. Here's Steve Hunt, midfielder, moves to the middle of the field. Tackled away from him. Nice move by Ian Anderson, playing his first game, number three. Now the Rowdies counterattack. Here they come. This is Wegerly. Then his pass goes awry, intercepted by Werner Roth. Rowdies have it again at midfield, but they lose it. Cosmos now. Field heads the ball back to the midfield line. Working with the ball there is Vito Dimitrievich, midfielder of the Cosmos. They move it on the right wing now. Terry Garbutt tries to dump it into the right wing corner, but it slides off the side of his foot. Rowdies have it. Big, big crowd here. They said yesterday, the day before the ball game, that they had already sold 41,000 tickets. And we may have the largest regular season crowd in league history here today. That's goalkeeper Paul Hammond. He was a bit shell-shocked last week as the Rowdies, for the first time in their history, lost both games of a road trip last Friday and Sunday at Chicago and Toronto. Cosmos have it in midfield. It rained just minutes before game time here. It might be a bit slippery. Here's the steal. The Rowdies have it. This is Mike Connell, the sweeper, moving in on the attack across the 35-yard line. Feeds the ball out in on top. Nobody was there. Went behind Rodney Marsh, the Cosmos steal. But it's taken away at midfield again by... Ian Anderson leads the ball forward for Marsh. Can't get to it. The Cosmos steal. This is Dylan, number 20, to start the ball up. This is interesting. Beckenbauer just finally got to touch the ball. And the important thing is for the American youth to watch his game. His execution is his consistency of play. He just knocked the ball away very softly with the outside of the foot. Here comes Rodney Marsh now. Streaks down the middle. He's got two men on him. Feeds the ball in on the back door, but nobody was coming down. Rodney Marsh moving to the left side of the penalty area and tried to feed it on the back door, the weak side, but nobody moving down. Over the end line it goes, and a goal kick for the Cosmos. That might have been uh, actually a shot on goal, but it's a bit slippery out there, and I think he lost possession of the ball, and body was not aligned correctly to his shot. Ball on the goal kick sent out to Dmitrievich. He leads it cross field on the right wing side. Chest trap attempt over there by Field, but he loses the ball to August. August then drops it back to his goalkeeper. There you get a look at the lineups. It's Shep Messing in goal and the back line we gave you. There's the midfielder, Steve Hunt, Terry Garbutt, Vito Dmitrievich, the forwards, Pele, Field, and Kinalia. It's a potent attack. And with Franz Beckenbauer, who is, as yet has not been a factor in the ball game, it should be even more potent. And the Cosmos, despite having an incredible number of shots in their games, have not been having much success getting the ball to the net. They've had a lot of bad luck, and I think uh, it's bound to turn and to the to the positive side. And I think you'll see today also Franz Beckenbauer getting involved in the attack as well. Here comes Kevin Egan, the right fullback. He's a rookie from the University of South Florida. Tackle away from him. And knocked out of bounds by Steve Hunt. Throw in for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And it goes to Anderson. Back to Egan. He's wide open. Centering pass attempt is knocked down. Rebound comes to Egan. But Moraes there steals the ball away from him and heals it back to Dillon. Cleared back to midfield. The Rowdies get it again. Here comes Anderson. He'll drop it back into his own zone to Arsene August. He's missed six weeks of action with an injury. Now for Egan on the right side. It bounces off his foot. Out of bounds. Play a bit sloppy at this point. And again, it rained for about ten minutes just before the kickoff. It is overcast right now, although rather warm and humid here. Cosmos have the ball in their own zone. Steve Hunt, double team, feeds it off to the midfield line to Dmitrievich. Now here comes Beckenbauer, moving in on the attack. He's straight into the 35, ahead to Canalia. He loses the ball. He goes back and gets it, though. He has Pelé in front of him now, avoids a tackle, still has it. Back to Pelé, open, 25 yards away. Tries to feed it through to Canalia, who is curling back in front, but it was knocked away, but a foul call on Tampa. This is a uh, great moment you just saw moments ago when Beckenbauer came from the back, moved up 40 yards into the attack, and executed a, a double pass with uh, Giorgio Canadia. We'll see a lot of that this afternoon. This is why Beckenbauer is such a great player, because he has that unique ability to get involved in the attacks. Free kick, Cosmos from 30 yards up. L.A. drives in. He takes the shot. It's deflected by the wall of the Rowdies. And over the end line, that means corner a Cosmos kick. corner kick in the left wing corner. Just out of your picture... They have a little corner kick arc down there. You can see Tony Field, number seven, over the ball. And a lot of jockeying around will be going now, now in front of the goal. 
Here's the centering pass. It's knocked down. Not a particularly good pass. And the route, he's able to clear it out. Here comes Wegerly. Knocked down. Looked like a handball. And the referee spotted it. Foul called. John, so a free kick for the Rowdies in their own zone. John, this will be a, a thing to watch on these corner kicks, how quickly Tampa will come out on counterattacks, just as they attempted here. But fortunately, Cosmo's got a uh, handball to prevent the quick counterattack. Rodney Marsh makes a long cross field pass to R.C. Nagus, makes the chest trap. He leaves the ball off over there, picked up by Wegerly. Wegerly, one of the league's leading scorers. Tampa has four of the top nine scorers in the league. Smethurst leads the league. Back at the 35-yard line, this is Wegerly. Pele over to Markin. Back out to August. Pass for Marsh, top of the penalty area, but it's tackled away from behind by the Cosmos. Comes back to Marsh on the right wing now. Marsh being picked up by Steve Hunt. Takes him into the corner. He's got Smethurst out front with Wegerly and Alston in the penalty box. And drops it back out to Egan. Correct that. That's Anderson. He crosses the ball out in front, but it's going to go up over the crossbar, out of play. Goal kick from Tampa. This is NASL Championship Soccer. It's really hard. Cosmos on the attack as we return to Tampa. No score in the match. We've played eight minutes of the first half. Cosmos now have a throw in deep in the attacking zone. Into the right wing corner it goes in the throw in, but it's taken away from Dmitrievich. He gets it back and fires a shot, but it's over the crossbar. Well, almost a defensive miscue for the Rowdies. Here we go. We see it on the replay, and this is well done by Dmitrievich, who rips a shot right over the crossbar and was well taken, well done all around by the attacking uh, Cosmos. Goal kick for the Rowdies. Paul Hammond gets it outside the penalty area, and August returns it to him. He'll punt it up the field with a full volley. This one goes about 50 yards. Pops loose to Franz Beckenbauer, but a foul had been called earlier. Adrian Alston was on the back of Werner Roth, and a foul called on the Rowdies, Adrian Alston. Free kick for the Cosmos. Goes to Dillon. Leads a high chip for Pelé. He's shoved from behind by Mike Connell. Referee didn't spot it. Ball comes to Rodney Marsh. Marsh. Marsh, three goals, five assists this year, and he's saying he's playing the best of his career as a team player right now. Stewart jump to Smethurst. This guy's a goal-scoring machine. His foot has radar to the goal. Here comes Marsh now. He's got Smethurst in front of him. He's obstructed off the play by Moraes. A foul call to Moraes, number 14, and a free kick for the Rowdies right near that penalty area. Okay, we see the replay here, and this was well done by Moraes. He had no choice but to obstruct him. Otherwise, Marsh was in and possibly to score a goal. So the play was a smart one by the defensive player, Moraes. Here's the free kick. Marsh goes out in front of the net. It's over the head. Rebounds out to Marsh. He's got it in the corner. That's Smithhurst in front, but a nice steal. Take it away. Steve Hunt leads the ball out to Dmitrievich. Now here's Pele, his final year. Ahead it goes to Tony Field, but Stewart Jump is there to write him off the play. Now the Cosmos starting to work a little more effectively now on the attack. But here come the Rowdies of Tampa on the attack the other way. This is Wegerly now. He's working on Beckenbauer. And Beckenbauer knocks it down, goes out in front of the goal, and Beckenbauer drops it into goalkeeper Shep Messing. And as the coach of the national team, I guess you know quite a bit about Mr. Messing. Yes, uh, Shep was uh, one of our World Cup goalkeepers. He also did a fantastic job with our Olympic team. And I'm sure he's very excited today to play with Beckenbauer, a world-class player. And this is something so important for our American players to be exposed to this world-class style of play. Shep, a graduate of Harvard. Here's Terry Garbett, midfielder in the right wing corner, tackled away from him by Kevin Egan, number 17. Out of bounds, throw in Cosmos. 
Now, Kinalia tries to chip it in front. It's partially deflected by Egan. Scissored out of the penalty area, Argus. Now, Dmitrievich tries to steal, comes to Hutton. Oh, my! Saving save by Hammond. On, on the fly, full volley down, rocket. Diving save. Okay, here's the replay. This was well taken. Stevie Hunt, a youngster with 20 years of age, does this as a professional should do. Rips a volley kick, and it's a dipping ball like in baseball, a drop ball. And keeper uh, Paul Hammond does a fantastic job to prevent a score. So the Cosmos are the first threat at a goal in the ball game. We've played now 11 minutes and a half for the first half. Tampa moving in. Here goes Smethurst across the 35-yard line. Don't give him room. He'll pump it in. But Moraes with a steal. Tries to give it right back, and the Cosmos, Tony Field, slips in the wet going down there. McLeod has it. Now Rodney Marsh sidesteps a man. On top it goes to Alston. Give and go with Marsh, but the misconnection is on the second pass, and the goalkeeper, Shep Messing, takes it away from him. Give and go there. Basic play, soccer, basketball, principle is the same. Very similar, John, and uh, this was well done by Rodney Marsh. As, as predicted, everything is going to Rodney. He's going to scheme and build for the Tampa Bay Rowdies, as he's just done moments ago. Ball is stolen away from Kinalia by Kevin Egan. Egan, the young American, playing quite a game. Here's a foot race. After the ball is Rodney Marsh. He's got it in the corner. Dylan is right on him for the Cosmos. Marsh tries to slip it by him, but Dylan is able to take it away. Now Moraes will send it again safely back to the goalkeeper, Shep Messing. Now, here comes Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer has said since last July he's played about 90 games. The hero of the West German World Champions of 1974. John, this is what soccer players are all about. Here's Beckenbauer playing 90 games, almost physically impossible, but still having that ability because of his fantastic discipline and conditioning himself to play soccer at such a high pace. Wes McLeod, American midfielder, out on top, and Beckenbauer with a hurtling sliding tackle takes it away from Smithhurst. Good battle there. Smithhurst, the great offensive player, and Beckenbauer, I guess if you were to compare him, you might say the, the Bobby Orr of soccer. He can do it all. Here come the Cosmos on the attack. Hunt hurtled down by Auguste in a foul call. And Hunt is down. And they're going to take a look at him here. From Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. We're camped for starving. Still playing for the Cosmos, but he is smarting just a bit. Limping a bit, looks like his ankle. Okay, the ball stolen by Tony Field, number seven of the Cosmos, ahead to Kinalia. Kinalia picked up by Stewart Jump, but Kinalia maintains control of the ball. The big bear. Oh, nice deal. Wes McLeod, Smethurst, give and go back to McLeod. Now Smethurst, ten goals this year in eight games played. He scored almost a goal a game in his entire career in the league. Smethurst, ahead it goes. Look out, Wengerly was. Sneaking in through the defense that time, but Beckenbauer was right there anticipating and intercepting the pass. John, surprisingly enough, both teams are marking very tight in the defending thirds of the field, and there's very little space to play. They're allowing a little bit of room in the middle here, as you can see them executing some play, but once they get into that defending third, there's very tight marking. Here come the Rowdies again. Rodney Marsh into the right wing corner. Foot race, Wegerly with Moraes. And Wegerly of Tampa beats him to the ball, but Moraes with a nice blindside tackle able to come back and drop it into his goalkeeper, Shep Messing. Last year, George Kinalia of the Cosmos scored a goal a game, 19 goals in 19 games. Pelé had 13 goals, and if you were to project his statistics over a hockey season, last year Pelé would have had 47 goals and 66 assists. Here comes Beckenbauer. He has pretty impressive statistics. Pelé is open. He hits it in front. There's Kinalia. Hit ball! Right on! Saved by Hammond. Best combination passing of the day. Let's watch this in the replay. This is like a coach throwing in on the board. Here is a combination. Beckenbauer serving to Pelé, a header to Canali, and a diving header trying to score. If you draw these kind of plays on the board. They don't happen that often. Beautifully done. And the three masters were the ones who set it up. Now here comes Dmitrievich. Long ball for Steve Hunt, but it goes behind him and Throws off out of bounds. Throw in for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And that last play that Beckenbauer play and Canale executed, unfortunately, Canale had enough time to hold the ball in his chest possibly and knock it in, but he didn't realize if there was anyone around him, so he executed the first touch play. Right now, the Cosmos have created more chances than the Rowdies, but here comes Tampa now. McLeod on the left wing. He's got Marsh and Smethurst in front of him. 
Picked up in the corner by Franz Beckenbauer. Pass into the danger zone right in front of the goal. Headed down by Dillon. Cosmos try to clear it out, but it's kept in the zone. Almost by Ian Anderson. Taken away by Dmitrievich, and a foul is called on Ian Anderson, number three in Tampa. He was holding. Free kick for the Cosmos. Quickly, Garbett starts it up the right wing. Tony Field, number seven. Seven goals, eight assists last year. Hasn't played a whole lot this year. There's Garbett, drops it back in his own zone to Werner Roth. We've played now 17 minutes and 20 seconds of the first half. No score. Long pass. Here goes Field into the penalty area. Wild, wide open games. Here's Kinalia. Right wing. Crosses it in front. Here goes Pelley. Great save by Hammond. And cleared out of the box. Kinalia Pele again. Almost. Okay. Here we see the play, and it's a super serve from Kinalia Pele, positioned himself perfectly. In fact, I recall him scoring this type of a goal in 1970 World Cup against Italy. What a great header by Pele. But Paul Hammond, again, doing a fantastic job saving that goal. Now the Rowdies again. Here's Smethurst now moving laterally at the 35 yard line. Starts it into the attacking area. Feeds it off on the left wing. There goes Wegerly. Crossing ball in front. Look out. Right on to Shep Messing. Right between Smethurst and Alston, who was coming in. There goes Wegerly. Crossing ball in front. Look out. Right on to Shep Messing. Right between Smethurst and Alston, who was coming in from. Back and forth we go. Drop back for Dillon. Takes a high hop off the turf. This is natural turf. Bermuda grass, very closely cropped here. Very true field. Beckenbauer, chip ahead. Kinalia goes after the ball. Leads it for Pelé, intercepted by Mike Connell, the sweeper back of the Rowdies. Long counter-attacking oh, pass intended yeah. for Smithhurst, and it's headed away by Beckenbauer. Messing picks it up. Werner Roth. Werner Roth, the captain today for the Cosmos. One of the very fine American players in the game today. Now here comes Hunt with Kinalia, but Kevin Egan. The rookie from South Florida intercepts the ball. Rodney Marsh, long ball up the left wing. Here goes Wegerly in on Mike Dillon. He's got Alston coming in on the right side. He's got Smethurst in the middle. He dribbles through. He takes a shot. He scores! to the slow motion. Wiggly does a super job taking the ball to his outside. Rips a shot deflected by a defender. Ship Messing had no chance. Kissed off the post and went into the net. A great effort by Wiggly. At about 20 minutes into the first half and between 45 and 50,000 fans are cheering the Rowdies in Tampa. Very important first goal there. And Steve Wiggly is the man who got it. For Wiggly, that is goal number three of the season. And Tampa has a 1-0 lead. That means the Cosmos are going to have to open it up perhaps a bit more here. Although one goal is not disaster time. John, there's still plenty of time. I think uh, the goal was a great effort, but the uh, Cosmos are playing very well today. I think the presence of Beckenbauer will certainly create some chan more chances for them, and they are still in this game as, as much as uh, the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Great individual effort that time. Steve Wegerly. Twenty minutes and one second is the time into the first half. Rodney Marsh somehow gets an assist on that, although Wegerly seems to be doing pretty well by himself. <laughs> kind of a liberal assist there. Here comes Smithurst. He takes a shot. Knocked down by Austin. Rebound comes. Here's Wes McLeod. Saves it in the zone. Chipped in by Anderson. Headed down by Austin from Marsh, but Beckenbauer clears. Back to Smithurst for 27 yards. From Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. Rowdy's leading 1-0 and back on the attack. Arsena Goose, the left fullback, in on the attack with Field in the corner. He goes around him. The centering pass goes back door. Smethurst up for the header, but it's over his head. And Moraes of the Cosmos clears it over the end line. And that means corner kick for Tampa. Walt corner kick. You've got a chance here to set some plays up, get some men open, work some, some screens, I guess you could call them. This could be a dangerous situation. Corner kicks are very dangerous because you can do a lot of screening, a lot of blocking, and, and running into the near post as they're doing right now. Look out in front of the net. Knocked down the rebound. Shot. Score! Ian Anderson! And 
they're rolling again in Tampa. Ian Anderson in his first game for the Rowdy scores on a, a rebound. Here's the play again. It's a low drive, as he said, near post run. A clearance here. Ian Anderson coming from the back now. Hits the ball low and sharp, and the grass is a bit wet, and it just took off on Chef Messing. Well parked in the far corner. Another ball for Ian Anderson. Ian Anderson has been in town for three days, and it's 2 nothing. Now the Cosmos have to open up, I think. Now they've got to go out and get a goal. They can't be so cautious defensively. They'll have to push up a little bit. Here goes Dmitrievich. He's got an opening drive. A shot! It just sails over the crossbar. He was 32 yards out and fired it in. That was well taken by uh, Vito. I think what's got to happen now, they got to score before halftime. Otherwise, Tampa's going to hold the ball. They're a younger team. They're probably more fitter because of their age, and they're going to hold the ball. So Cosmos must put a lot of effort now in the last 20 minutes. 23 minutes and 27 seconds officially into the match is the time of Anderson's goal. So they scored two goals in three minutes and 27 seconds. Here come the Rowdies again, the highest scoring team in the league. Hard tackle by Dmitrievich, and a foul call to midfield of Dmitrievich. Close up of Rodney Marsh. Look, Rodney what's Marsh. it look like, Walt? Uh, it, it looks like it. From Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. By two goals, they need to score here. Steve Hunt starts into Tampa zone now, to the 35-yard line. Pass in the middle, lead ahead for Kinalia, intercepted by Kevin Egan. And the youngster, Egan, 22 years old, first round draft choice to the Rowdies, has performed admirably well here today. This has got to be an exciting moment for Kevin. Uh, he's for the first time playing against some world-class players, and I'm sure he was a bit nervous, but he's doing a job as a professional, and I'm excited to see him play because we hope to counter and use him in a World Cup uh, competition in the future. Here comes Wegerly. He scored a goal today in the left-wing corner. Beckenbauer over. Crossing ball. Back door. Here goes Al Austin after the ball, but he's knocked away from the play by Werner Raw. Now Pelé will start it out. He shouts at his Rodney Marsh over the ball. Here it comes, back door. Here's Mike Connell up. He heads it right out in front for Alston, headed out of the box to Pele. He tries to clear it. Now Hunt has it. He's going to get it into his goalkeeper dangerously in traffic as Smethurst, the goal scorer, was hovering around the goal mouth, but they got it into Messing. Now the Cosmos started out. They lost here last year 5-1. to one. They beat the Rowdies in New York 5-4. to four. A lot of goals scored when these two teams meet. It's because of the quality of players uh, on these two teams. They both can go to goal. They're both exciting teams. And it's almost a replica of last year at the same stadium. Uh, Tampa got quick goals, and here they've done it again uh, this 1977 season. 14 and a half minutes left in the first half from Tampa. The first telecast of the year on TBS. And it's a big game for both ball clubs, not only because of the worldwide significance of Pelé, Beckenbauer, Kinalia in the same club, but because of the standings in the Eastern Division. Here's a steal by Egan. The Cosmos lose, and Washington wins tonight in Rochester. The Cosmos will be in last place in the division. This time, Wegerly is swung over to the right wing, moving in on Moraes, and Moraes is called for a pushing foul down there. You see him questioning the call of referee Bob Mathewson. The Rowdies, this is even a little more dangerous than a corner kick. Marsh looks for Smethurst, and it goes wide of the net comes loose in the corner and hits the corner kick flag over there. Last touch by the Cosmos and the Rowdies get it. Wait a minute. The Rowdies claiming that they should get a corner kick, but they say no. The ball last touched by Marsh. Goal kick for the Cosmos. That free kick was well taken by Rodney Marsh. What did he bend the ball away from the goalkeeper as you, as you saw Shep was trying to reach for it, but couldn't because of a hook or a bent ball. Smart play on the part of Rodney. Kinalia chases the ball on the right wing. It's tackled away from him. Nice sliding tackle. Tackle meaning simply taking the ball away from the opposition with your foot. Cosmos got it back in a throw in. Now Terry Garbett, number eight, midfielder. Fine assist man, but he loses. Wes McLeod, nice steal. Here come the Rowdies again. Smethurst in front of him. Wegerly on the left. Wegerly has it. Roth picks him up. He goes around him, but Roth tripped him. 
He was beaten in the play, and he reached out the leg and tripped him. Free kick for the Rowdies. Very dangerous spot here. This, again, will be very dangerous. Uh, I'm sure the Cosmos are going to try to form some kind of a defensive wall, as you can see them uh, lining. And uh, this creates a lot of problems here for the Cosmos in the defense. Marsh is over the ball, and Adrian Austin will get over it, too, as you see all the positioning going on in front of that goal. There's Rodney Marsh directing traffic, the playmaker of this ball club. He does have an assist in this game today. Rodney approaches now, drops it out to the middle. Tampa will bring it out now and try to set it up. Here's Egan in the middle. Mike Connell, 27 yards out. Smithhurst drops it to McLeod, fires a shot right on the missing. He dies down, covers it up. Very patiently executing that time, and they got the opening for the wide open shot. Incredible, John. Uh Stuff. They're relaxed, they're composed, they want to hold the ball and they want to take the perfect shot, which they just executed with McLeod doing it. Here come the Cosmos trying to catch up, trailing 2 0, 11 45 left in the half. Here's Garbutt on the right wing. He's being obstructed off the play by Wes McLeod, but they say that Garbutt was the man who fouled him. Garbutt was holding that time, so the, the Rowdies get it. Here's Ian Anderson. What a thrill. 22 years old, his first game in America, and he scores a goal against right now the most. Uh, star-studded team in the world. Unbelievable, John. Uh, this Tampa Bay Rowdy is a very young team. Uh, Wes McLeod, for example, a national team player for Canada, did a fantastic job for the Canadian against the U.S. and Haiti, and now he's doing a super job again. So these youngsters are going to prevail today in the heat, it seems that way. Long pass for Smethurst, but Beckenbauer is back there. Correct that that was Dylan, not Beckenbauer. We apologize. Dylan was back. Beckenbauer is really pushing up now. There goes Hunt left wing, but he has trouble trapping the ball. Marsh steals from him. And Marsh will bring the ball out of the zone. At halftime, we're going to take a look at the rest of the league for you and also have an exclusive interview with Franz Beckenbauer. Rowdy's up, leading 2 0, 10 40 left, first half. Here they come into the attacking zone again. Wegerly on the left wing side. He's got Alston and Smethurst in front. He's picked up by Beckenbauer. Feed Smethurst. Give and go. Turn around. Open shot. Knocked down. Rebound comes out. Shot is deflected in front from 14 yards out. The Rowdies have it again. Almost a goal that time. Here comes Wegerly again. Feeds it a jump. Back to Wegerly. Give and go. Shot taken. Wide of the goal. Out of play. Goal kick Cosmos. John, they're doing some. They're doing some magic out there, and uh, it looks like uh, they're totally in control of the game and uh, pressing uh, continuously. June 19th, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central. will be before a big crowd in Minnesota. George Bass, Charlie Cook, Steve David, the wide-open Los Angeles Aztecs, and uh, Alan Willey, Ron Futcher, the great scoring attack of the defending division champion Minnesota Kicks. That's our next TBS telecast, Sunday, June 19th. Here come the Cosmos now. Nelsi Moraes in across the 35 into the attacking zone. Out on top for the lane. Knocked away by Connell. Comes back to Dmitrievich. Dmitrievich to Moraes. Moraes on the right wing side. Going after the ball. His field picked up by a goose. Goes around him. Fires a shot right on the goalkeeper. Hammond. I think here, John, uh, the problem was Tony Fields should have never shot the ball. He had a bad angle. He should have played it to the center, possibly to Canalio Calais, who was at the far post. Those kind of angles are not that easy to score from, especially goalkeepers like Paul Hammond. Here comes Alston. Smethurst. Alston fires a shot, and Messing dives to his left. Make sure there's no rebound for Smethurst to fire in. Boy, the game has really opened up. You saw all the room the Rowdies had to move that time in the danger zone as the Cosmos are pushing up. What's happening, John, is that Beckenbauer is getting caught up a bit. The, the heat is not helping him, of course. He's, he has to adjust himself to this kind of weather. So he's being caught up and consequently exposing the defense to a lot of uh, uh, open holes. And uh, this is the problem at the moment for the Cosmos. Meanwhile, the Rowdies' defense is able to, to lie back. They've got a safe 2-0 lead. And they're causing the Cosmos all kinds of problems once New York gets across midfield. Now the Rowdies trying to move in on the attack again. Here's Wes McLeod and, uh, or correct that, Alston, foul called on Werner Raw. Free kick from 35 yards or 36 yards out for Tampa. Marsh is over the ball. They'll try to get something working here for the Rowdies with 8-10 left. First half, 2-0 Tampa. August, he'll shoot from out there. He's got a good shot. Instead goes to Wegerly. Field is out on it. Out of Marsh. They're taking their time, no hurry. On top, Alston give and go to Marsh, and Dylan heads it out. 
get it out of the penalty box. Auguste goes after it. Dimitrievich, dangerous kick. Got the foot up in the face area. That's a foul. Dangerous kick. Free kick for the Rowdies from 34 yards out. Again, this is a, a, a two-touch situation. Uh, if the player takes the ball directly on goal, no squirrel uh, will be uh, uh, accepted. So, therefore, it must be touched by another. Side right with the ball is Kinalia. Look out for him. Chip in front. Two men there. But Kano is able to chip the ball high. Dylan goes after it. Pops loose in the penalty area. And a foul is called in there. On Dylan, number 20 of the Cosmos. Well, you keep feeling that the Cosmos are going to bust loose here and score a couple, but the Rowdies' defense has been up to the task each time. Look out. Here comes Smethurst, but Beckenbauer there to take it off his foot. John, I think what's happening that the Cosmos are building up too slow. They're holding the ball much too, too long and consequently allowing the Tampa Bay Rallies to fall back and pick up their man. So they got to go a bit faster in order to create some more chances. Here comes Beckenbauer for Kinalia, penalty area, but Hammond comes 12 yards out of the goal to reach out and grab it away from him. Long pass to midfield over the head of Austin, headed down by Werner Roth of New York, but Tampa has it. Cosmos will have the first appearance of Franz Beckenbauer in New York Wednesday night. This coming Wednesday, they'll play Lazio of, of Rome, which is Kinalia's former team at the Meadowlands in New York. They get a look. Hammond has made four saves in the ball game, so the Cosmos have tested him a few times. Messing's had to make three saves, but they've got two by him. Look out, here they come again. Wide open is Austin. Shot over the bar. He was 10 yards out. Well, the Rowdies are creating one chance after another right now. This, again, was a fantastic opportunity for the uh, Tampa Bay to go on board, but uh, interesting matchup. Uh, Adrian Olsen was a World Cup player for Australia in 1974 in, in Germany, and Franz Beckenbauer played against them uh, in 1974. So there again, they're both going at it. Here's Pelé. Olsen, in fact, was the, the player of the game in that uh, one game against West Germany, even though his team lost, so he's quite a player. Here goes Nelson Moraes now. He's got McLeod all over him. McLeod is a Canadian Olympic team member. Here come the Rowdies now. Alston tried to hit Smithhurst ahead, but the Cosmos able to do it a set. Steve Hunt for Kinalia, 35-yard line. Chips it back. Now ahead for Steve Hunt, moving into that danger zone. Kinalia ahead. Here goes Dmitrievich, but the pass was missed the mark. Here comes Connell of the Rowdies. The sweeper back, lost one for Smethurst, heads it down to Alston, look out, he's got room, into the penalty box. He's got a man in front, Smethurst now, decides to drop it back out to Rodney Marsh at the 35-yard line. And again, the Rowdies now will take their time, slow, deliberate passes here. Alston now moves straight in. Alston picked up by Dillon, drops the ball off to McLeod, and McLeod is 24 yards out, but goes to Wengerly in the left-wing corner. 2.35 left. McLeod goes, or uh, Wegerly goes around two men. Shoots, and he scores! Wow, what a play! Here we see on the, on the replay, fantastic footwork again by Wagerly, and this is what we call a world-class ball. He, Edmund, who is one opponent, another one from Cosmos comes up, he rips it into the far post under the crossbar. Chet Messing had no chance of getting that ball. That is a super world-class effort by Wagerly. Wagerly, his second goal of the game, and the second time he's done it all by himself. Fantastic. Now the Cosmos, well, they got to score a goal here going into halftime. They trail three nothing. Here they come now. Dmitrievich cleared away from him. Sliding tackle. Wes McLeod. For the Rowdies in the North American Soccer League, you get six points for a win and a point for each goal you score up to three. They've got a full nine-point victory right now if they don't score another goal. John, they're really coasting now. They're in good shape. They, they have three goals on top. Uh, they're playing in, in their own uh, climates. Uh, they can control the ball now. They have a lot of players with poise. They're young. They're fit. Uh, Cosmos have a difficult battle in the second half. Long pass. Here goes Wegerly again. He's got it in the corner. Werner Roth, number four to pick him up. He puts it under him. And finally, they're able to take it away. Garbutt got back in the play and knocked it away from him. It'll be a quarter kick. There you see the time left. That is unofficial, although it is pretty close. 
And they've stopped time now. Garbutt was hurt down there on that play. It looks and he's like he's down at his shin. Looks like he jammed his ankle against uh, Warren. Well, they're overlooking at him, and the trainer will come out. The Cosmos trailing 3 0 in this game. Last year, the highest scoring team the league had almost three goals a game. And with the Cosmos, I've heard it so many times, Walt, the worst thing a team can do to the Cosmos is sit on a lead because they're going to go out and score goals. And you get one or two quick ones, they're right back in it. This is very true. You can't uh, say the game is over because of the uh, quality of players that the Cosmos have. Beckenbauer is capable of scoring any minute. Pelé and Canale are also great goal getters. So it's not uh, over and uh, still another 45 minutes to go. Corner kick for Tampa, but the ball is, has a bit too much boot in it. Comes all the way out of bounds on the near side. Cosmos have it. There you see the time. Well, time enough for a rush or two to try and get one in the net for the Cosmos, trailing 3-0 to the Rowdies. Tampa is 25-2 and two in their history here, regular season home games. Here's a steal, Auguste. And here come the Rowdies again. Auguste from Wegerly swings him free. They've got Smithhurst and Austin in front. Ground ball pass, Smithhurst, he tries to fire it in on the run, but he chips it too high over the goal. Goal kick, Cosmos. I think when that play was a super serve by Auguste, and uh, Smithhurst could have done a dummy and let the ball go between his legs, uh, and uh, Adrian Alston was waiting to knock it in. But still a super effort by all three players. There you see time about to run out on the scoreboard. The referee will blow his whistle on the field, and he blows the whistle. And that is the end of the first half, and a standing ovation in Tampa for the Rowdies. Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. Stay tuned for more NASL Championship Soccer after a word from your local station. This is the TBS Television Network. We are at halftime of this big, big ball game in Tampa, Florida. The Cosmos and the Tampa Bay Rowdies before the biggest crowd in regular season NASL history. A lot of other things going on in the North American Soccer League. They have been for quite a while. Last night, in fact, a couple of ball games of notes. Los Angeles in Seattle, 2-1 victory, 23,000 at that ball game. And Dallas in a battle for first place in the South, defeated Las Vegas. 19,000 plus at Dallas. So the standings now look this way and this Eastern Division in a log jam. Remember, six points for a victory and a point for each goal you score. You can get as many as nine points for a victory, as little as seven points. There is the Northern Division. That's sort of the division where nobody wants to take it by the horns right now. The team which loses the fewest will win that one. The West all belongs to Minnesota. And the kicks at home today, they're expecting about 35,000 at home. In the South, well, three teams are tied for first, although Dallas and Los Angeles, with those bonus points, which we mentioned, are in a better position than Las Vegas right now with a game in hand. Derek Smethurst, as we've mentioned during the first half, leading the NASL in scores as the day began. Well, now tied with Steve David of L.A. He got a goal last night, and the rest of the list through the top five. 
attendance. That's a big story in the North American Soccer League, and look at that. Top four teams in the league, all averaging better than 20,000 a game, and almost half the league now is averaging in double figures. Attendance up right now, 28% over last year, which was the all-time record. A big story in soccer in this country. Take a look at the scores. Well, not the scores, but the games coming up today in your area. Still time to make it on out if you so choose. Also, some big games coming up during the week, so mark it down in your calendar. Make your plans to be out the game in your area. One of the things we're going to be doing as well at halftime of NASL soccer is take you behind the scenes a bit, give you perhaps a bit of a better understanding as to some of the rules and tenets of this the simple game. And Walt, what are we going to look at today? John, we're going to discuss the offsides play. And last Sunday in New York, Chicago Sting played against the Cosmos, and there's a very clear picture of how a player was being trapped offsides. Let's have a look at the clipping. This is Chicago on the attack. The right wing moving into the attacking zone across that 35-yard line, the offside line, which you see. The right fullback is moving into the picture here, into offense. Watch the linesman now. Black suit, top of the screen. Here goes a pass. The flag goes up. The man is offside. Walk. Why was he offside? John, we have a diagram here. We'll try to explain it very clearly and very simply. The rule is this. When the ball is being passed to an attacking player, he must have two defenders in front of him. In this situation that you saw on the replay, the Chicago player already was ahead of the defending team, and the pass arrived to him. So here he's offside. If a Cosmos player would have been standing here and he received the pass, he still could have gone to goal and scored. This situation didn't warrant that. All right, that's the rule. Let's go back and look at that Cosmos game and see if you can catch the offside. Here comes Walt. Right wing's got the ball. You can tell us exactly when offside occurs. Okay, here the central uh, forward is holding the ball, and now the overlapping player is going into the attack, but much too early. Receives the pass, and consequently, only having one defender in front of him. The rule says you must have two in front of you when the ball is being passed to you. They say it's a difficult rule that couldn't be simpler. Offside. We'll be doing that, taking a look at some of the simple rules of the simple game throughout this 1977 season. We'll be back in Tampa with more of our halftime program in just a moment. At halftime, we're down on the field on the bench with uh, very expensive talent. And this is perhaps one of the reasons, perhaps the biggest reason, why the eyes of the world are focused here on Tampa, Florida today. His name is Franz Beckenbauer. And Franz, the hero of the West German World Cup champions, 1974, and perhaps one of the greatest players in the world here to team up with Pelé. And Franz, first of all, welcome to America. Thank you very much. Why does Franz Beckenbauer leave West Germany, where he's a hero, to come to America? 
I think it's uh, many reasons. The first reason is sure, very contract, very good contract uh, with Tirana, with uh, Cosmos and Tirana communication. Uh, the second reason, important reason, is my age. I will in September 32 years old, and I have in my sports life all arrived. Uh, championship 74 world cup uh, many european championships and german uh, championships uh, that's uh, sure the important reason and uh, the next reason is the famous player in this team like pele i think it's a dream from everybody from every uh, a soccer player to play with Pelé together in a team than Kinalia and uh, Robert uh, Ramon Mifflin. I think this, this three are the important reason. What about the future of soccer in America? I know you haven't been here too long, but with Pelé here, Kinalia here, do you look at uh, America as perhaps the next uh, soccer bastion of the world? I don't know. I cannot say this. I'm here for uh, I come on on uh, last uh, Tuesday. It's a, sh a, a short time to to say how is the future the American uh, the American soccer. But uh, I see the Cosmos team, and I have to say the Cosmos team is a good team of a very good condition and very good technique man. I think it's a, it's a good team and the other teams, and I don't know the other teams in, in, in the States. I cannot say about these teams. And this is a guy who says he can't speak English. Franz, good luck. Thanks for chatting with us. Okay, thank you very much. NASL Championship Soccer is brought to you by the people in your town who also bring you the bright, refreshing taste of Coca-Cola. Coke adds life to just about everything you do. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Toyota. You ask for soccer, you got it. Thanks to Toyota, makers of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, the official car of the NASL. Second half about to begin. The Cosmos in green. Eight shots in the first half, and Shep Messing made three saves, and the Cosmos did have four corner kicks, so they did have some offense, but they just were unable to put the ball in the net. Cosmos start the attack as we begin the second half. There you see Tampa had 14 shots. Hammond had four saves, and Tampa also had four corner kicks. So, well, the difference really right now, Tampa having almost double the number of shots as the Cosmos. One change in the lineup for the Cosmos. Ramon Mifflin, great World Cup player from Peru, is in the ball game at midfield, replacing Terry Garbutt. So the Cosmos have the same back line, Beckenbauer and Roth in the middle, and Moraes the right fullback, Dylan the left fullback. Now at midfield, it's Mifflin, Hunt, and Dmitrievich, Pele, Kinalia, and Field on the front line. For the Rowdies, as far as we can tell, the same lineup starts the second half. And why not? They lead 3-0. That was a smart move by Gordon Bradley. I think he wants to get Raymond into game because he has that ability to create chances to score as well. Whereas Tony Terry Garber was more of a defensive link, uh, Raymond Mifflin is more offensive. Well, the Cosmos almost creating a chance that time. Hunt got it in front, but just behind Canalia, the big bear. Last year, the Cosmos scored three goals or more in exactly half of their games. 
So they're very much capable of getting back into this one, the highest scoring team in the league. But here come the Rowdies now. They'd like to uh, add to that 3 0 lead. Here goes McLeod into the penalty box. He's working on Dillon, feeds the ball right out on top. Turn around, shot by Austin, just over the bar. Adrian Austin, turn around from 19 yards, just a bit high. Here's the problem again. Cosmos are falling back too deep. They're falling into their penalty box, allowing the players, as we call it, dance with the ball in the penalty box. And there again, a clever move by McLeod, passing the ball to Adrian Olsen, almost a, a scoring chance again. The Cosmos, as we mentioned, scoring at least three goals in half of their games last year, scored more than three goals in five of their games, also a league-leading figure. Here comes Beckenbauer down the middle for the Cosmos. Four-year contract for quite a bit. Here goes Hunt as the pass threads the needle, but coming 16 yards out of the goal mouth is Paul Hammond. Hammond, who was shell-shocked last weekend for eight goals in two games. And this entire Rowdy's defense was soundly criticized in the Tampa press during the week, and they all appear to have something to prove out here today against the Cosmos. Just underway, second half, 3-0 Tampa. Down the right wing, Alston. He's got Warner Roth, number four, on his back. Austin loses the ball over the sideline, and it will be a New York throw it into the goalkeeper, Shep Messinger goes. The Rowdies have won 14 in a row here in regular season play. This year, they've scored 15 goals and allowed one in four and a half games at home. Put an advantage to play at home. They got 50,000 people screaming for them. They got a fantastic field. They're a fit team, and I'm impressed really with Kevin Egan now. He's marking Canale a man to man, and he actually hasn't allowed Canale to do anything that's of significant nature. Tony Field trying to beat Ian Anderson, number three, and Anderson bumps him off the ball while not playing the ball. Foul called Anderson. Free kick Cosmos. Pelé like to perform some magic. Canale, he's open, and it's just cleared away from him by Auguste. Just in the nick of time because Canale was a second away from stuffing one home. Cosmos again started back in. Here's Ramon Mifflin ahead. Kinalia, he drives in, but it's a bit too long for him. And Hammond is able to cover it up 10 yards from the goal mound. Marsh to start the counterattack for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Hopping over the ball is Wengerly. And out of bounds it goes. Cosmos throwing in their own zone. I'm not so sure where the Tampa Bay Rowdies are doing the correct thing at the moment. They're falling back, and they're, they're trying to now uh, hold and preserve the score. And maybe that's a bit too early, especially against an explosive team such as the Cosmos. Here come the Cosmos again. I tell you, you keep giving this club opportunities. They're bound to put one home. The odds are. Here's Ramon Mifflin. Left wing. Hunt. He's in alone, but he misses the ball. Hunt just mistimed the ball that time. A good pass. He'd gotten open very well, but then he lost it. Steve Hunt, he's a very, he's a youngster. He's arrived from England this year. He's done a super job for them, but oh, on that play, he was a little bit too anxious to uh, to execute it. Raymond Mifflin rid of the great pass, but uh, Steve Hunt overran it, and nothing happened. Rowdy's moving in on the right wing. This is Ian Anderson. He's had a goal in the ball game. Steve Wegerly had two goals. No foul there. Rowdy's maintained control of the ball. Here goes McLeod, Canadian national. He's got a little space, but the man marking him is Beckenbauer, number six. Ahead, Smethurst, look out. He's got Marsh in front, but nice tackle. Took it away from him. Out to midfield, and Kevin Egan. Nice play to take it away from Pelé. It's got to be a dream for a player like uh, McLeod, who just went into the box and took on the Beckenbauer one against one. What a dream. Not too many kids have the opp opportunity to do, this to do this kind of thing, but it's happening tonight for McLeod. Canalia in the danger zone with Pelé. Drives a shot taken, but he misses the net. Wide right. This is NASL. Well, this is NASL Championship Soccer, and we're going to hold on to it right here as apparently the Cosmos had been called for offside right there. Five minutes, 20 seconds gone, second half. Three-nothing, Tampa. As the Rowdies, as unbeatable as any team is at home. At home, you know, you can compare them to anybody in sports, the Montreal Canadiens, any of the great steamrollers, as it were. And at home, as they approve, time after time, you can, you're going to need a miracle or something to beat them. John, wait a minute. You forgot to mention the most important team that wins at home. That's the Philadelphia Flyers. I'm from Philly. I got to get the credit. All right. Our hats are off to Philadelphia. <laughs> all right. And we say hello to all of Chiswick's friends up there in the Philadelphia area. Don't have too many, but say hello anyhow. <laughs> all right. We can pretend. 
We gotta think up a nickname for you. Instead of the Giffer, how about the Chiser? I'll tell you, I got a lot of them. I haven't heard, but they're around, they tell me. <laughs> Here goes Smethurst now, going back door. It's headed away from him, and the Cosmos get it. Dylan, or correct that, Hunt drops it into Shep, messing the goalkeeper. Messing a Harvard graduate. Loves to play the game. Now Mifflin. Beckenbauer. Boy, there's a couple of world-class players right there. Back to Mifflin, moving in on the attack across the 35-yard line. The attacking zone, Beckenbauer now. Beckenbauer, look at that ball control. Out of the middle it goes, Dmitrievich. On the left wing, here goes Hunt, moving into the penalty box, the danger zone. As Pelé, Kinalia, Mifflin in front, but he's having trouble over there with Stewart jump. Jump knocks it loose, but now Hunt has an opening, and Kevin Egan is there to knock it down. Hunt has it again. He doggedly hangs on. Has three men in front, and finally Egan rides him off the ball. Beautiful defensive move. Now that is magic play by a rookie who just arrived from a college and doing all this fantastic work. He took the ball so cleverly, fouled no one, won the ball free, and served it the way it should be done. Uh, that is composure, and I really like Kevin. Rowdies have lost it out of bounds. Cosmos throw in. Goes into Beckenbauer. He's quarterback in the ball club right now. He's leading. He's playing more of a midfield position. They've got one or two men back playing defense right now. Here's Kinalia, 30 yards from the goal. Chip into the penalty box. Here's Dylan. He's open now. Looks for the centering pass. Out in front. Drive a shot. Great save. Rebound. Pelé. It's again knocked loose. And Pelé hit his own man. Pelé's shot was knocked loose by Kinalia. This is the bad luck that the Cosmos have had. Watch on the replay here. Unfortunate stuff. Great serve here. Here's an effort by a deflection from the keeper. Field takes a chance. Passes here to Pelé. Shot on goal. Canalia didn't see the shot. Turned his back and blocked the score. Unfortunate luck for the Cosmos. Wow. How much worse can things get? I don't know how Hammond made the stop initially. That's the save of the game right there. Here come the Rowdy. Smedhurst heads it down in front for Alston. But Beckenbauer there to steal. We call that uh, saying a few prayers because really Paul didn't see the ball. He just put his body in front of it and uh, fortunately deflected it. Not to score a goal, uh, to score a goal there is as bad as bad luck can be. Here comes Canalia again. They come right back. Canalia. Pele. Oh, Wes McLeod anticipated, intercepts it, and clears it out of bounds. From Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. John Miller, Walt Chisowitz back here in Tampa. The Rowdies moving in. While we're away, the Cosmos almost scored another goal, Walt. John, the Cosmos are really unlucky. Here's a great effort again. A super shot on goal. Hits the near post. Deflection ricochets away, and nothing happens again. Cosmos are, can't buy a break, and it's just unfortunate because they are really in the game. The, the score is not indicative of what's happening on this field. Well, even though they haven't scored, it is indicative of the explosiveness. That was almost two goals in a span of a few minutes, which would have put them right back in it. Here come the Rowdies, Marsh. Look out, he's open. Crossing ball, Smithers. Hit ball, great save! Wow, and it stays in bounds. The entire ball has to go over the line. Great save by Messick. Okay, here's the super effort by uh, both teams. A great serve, and uh, Derek Smithers coming from the blind side, and Shep Messick flying away, touches the post, and ball goes out of bounds, or almost out of bounds. A great effort by Shep Messing, a World Cup player for our national team. Look out, here comes Wegerly, number seven. He has two goals already. Moraes knocks it loose, but Wegerly gets it back now. He takes him to the end line. Crossing ball, goes back door. They've got a man there. This is Anderson, out in front to Alston. Dmitrievich knocks it loose. Anderson goes after the ball, but Dmitrievich everywhere all of a sudden. Starts the counterattack for the Cosmos. But there's the young fellow, the rookie. First round draft choice from the University of Southern Florida to knock it loose. And the Rowdies started back in on the attack again. 
This is Wiggerly on the left wing. A lot of time left, 33-45 left in the match, but it's 3-0 Tampa. And Tampa has the ball, Rodney Marsh. He goes around one man, two man, but Mifflin gives him a hard forearm and knocks him down, foul call. That's called obstruction, John, and uh, Mifflin didn't have a choice because otherwise uh, Rodney Marsh was through and possibly to score another goal. So a smart play on Raymond Mifflin. We'll get a look at it here. Is Marsh had them both beaten? Yes, he did. He does clever footwork here, and there's Raymond Mifflin applying. We call it a four-check in football, but certainly not allowed in soccer. So, uh, Raymond, take that back to Peru with you. In indirect free kick. Has to touch two players before he can go in the net. Look out. Knocked loose by Beckenbauer, and Roth clears it out of the penalty area. The penalty box, 18 yards from the goal line and 18 yards out from each goal post, and... Once they get into there, that definitely is danger, danger, danger. Rodney Morris, an intentional handball. He could get a yellow caution card for that. Ungentlemanly conduct. Yes, that would be an automatic fine. That's a possibility. John, I'll tell you what I'm impressed with. Uh, a lot of cynics around the world and uh, America, they'll say, well, Beckenbauer's not really trying. He's here to make the money. That's not true. I've never seen Beckenbauer so many times on the grass doing sliding tackles as he's doing today, so he's putting a super effort. Here goes Wiggerly. Oh, they had a man back door. Alston is there. Here's Smithers. Look out. He winds. He fires. He... And just what I was talking about, John, you saw Beckenbauer again. And here's on the replay, you see the great passing ability of the Tampa Bay Rallies. Derry ripping a shot off the crossbar, but you see Beckenbauer on the grass sliding again. I saw him play against Holland in 74 to, to win a world championship. He never did so much sliding as he's doing today. And now Smethurst, who can smell a goal as well as anybody in soccer, has had two excellent chances go by the boards, but here they come again, offside. Ian Anderson was offside on the right wing, no doubt about it. He was in beyond the defense that time. Only the goalkeeper was in front of the goal line for Cosmo's defense. And there must be two defenders between that man and the goal line when the ball is played. And Walt, you explained it so very well at halftime. Thank you, John. I'll tell you, the only thing I don't like about Derek is the fact that he's not a citizen yet because I'm looking forward to having, me, having him on my national team because this guy is murder. He can create chances. He's so dangerous. He attracts two defenders at all times. I just think he's a great forward for so the Tampa Bay Rowdies. U.S. team has done very well defensively, but they've well, had a lack of scoring punch up front. This is our main problem, but I think that will be overcome soon. We have some youngsters coming up that may be able to provide it, plus maybe Derek will become a citizen soon, and that may be just another contribution uh, to our success internationally. Speaking of scoring punch, we'll have plenty of that. Two of the best scoring teams in the league. I think we'll have six of the top ten scorers in the ball game at Minnesota Sunday, June 19th, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central. Los Angeles at Minnesota. Here's Auguste. They go back door for Smethurst. Heads it back in front for Alston, but Werner Roth, number four, is there to cover it up. Cosmos lose it. Mike Connell, number six of the Rowdies, who's played a good one. He's 20 years old, quite a player himself. Now Wegerly. Wegerly's had his best day in America. Rodney Marsh, number 10. Back out in front. Well, they overshoot the man. Here comes Pelé. Oh, the Black Pearl in his final year. Neither he nor Beckenbauer nor Kinalia able to get it started. Now Tony Field into the attacking zone, but Rodney Marsh, sure-footed tackle, clears it out of bounds, throw in New York, left wing side. I'll tell you, John, I'm very impressed with Rodney's game today. He has come out to win this game. Uh, he's taken over the captainship and fantastic effort. He's working hard. He's collecting balls. He's dictating to the attack. He's something of a player and uh, a lot of credit to him and his performance today. Into the attacking zone. The Cosmos have it now. Mifflin, look at that control down there and a handball by Arsene Auguste. And the linesman right on top of the play alerted the referee by holding it off his flag. Now, Auguste must be 10 yards back from the ball. All Tampa players... No closer than 10 yards for the ball in a free kick. Here goes Moraes. He's got a bit of an opening. He drives in, centers the ball, knocked down. Cosmo still have it. Dylan back out to Mifflin. Crossing ball. Pelé, back door. Scissoring kick. Get out of you! This is the unfortunate luck today for the Cosmos. From Tampa, Tampa this is NASL Championship Soccer. A reminder to watch the 11th Annual Victor Awards, the Academy Awards of Sports, on Saturday, June 25th. The top stars of the entertainment and sports worlds will be there, so you be there too. Saturday, June 25th, exclusively on TVS. Dmitrievich, number three, is on the field as he 
Looks like he seems to be clutching his midsection as you watch a collision, and he seems, well, now, I don't know if it's the leg or what, but while we were away, he was involved in a collision, and Pelé is over telling the referee that he was badly fouled, and there's number 20, Mike Dillon. He's also down a bit, and Walt, it looks like Dmitrievich is in some pain here. All right, we've got a break in the action, and from Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. They're still looking over Dmitrievich down there, and we'll remind you that our next TBS telecast, Sunday, June 19th, and it's going to be a good one. The Los Angeles Aztecs with Steve David, who's tied for the league scoring leadership, as we saw at halftime, along with Georgie Best, who's back at full tilt. And Minnesota, Ron Puncher, Alan Willey, Alan West, they were in the championship game last year, and there should be 35, 40,000 fans in Minnesota for that one. So join us, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central on TVS. That's a good team, John. Minnesota kicks there on top of their division. Uh, they're a well-coached team. They have several uh, American players who are also on our World Cup team. Uh, Sam Vick for one. He plays on the right side. Uh, David DeRico for another plays on the left side. Both are products of the American school system, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing them play for Minnesota. Free kick for the Rowdies, as you saw, Dmitrievich is up and walking around. The shot on the free kick, a direct free kick, wide of the net, goal kick, Cosmos. 3-0. Well, the Cosmos uh, had two beautiful opportunities to score about 10 minutes ago. One where Pelé had a, a goal and Kinalia blocked it. And another one where they hit the goal post. John, when things go wrong, they go wrong. And here it's unfortunate for the Cosmos. They've, they've played a, a great game. They've uh, put in the super effort, but they've been around the crossbar. They've kissed the post. They've done everything but put it in the net. Here they come now. Here's Tony Field, knocks the ball down, but there's Kevin Egan right behind him, right in position. And the ball goes to Stewart, jump number 13. Egan is seemingly everywhere he's supposed to be all day long. Adrian Alston, number nine. Rodney Marsh, number 10. Chip for Alston, he drives in, he's open, he misses the net on the shot. This is a great play by Rodney Marsh. He collected the ball, looked up. He forced Olsen to run into space, and we call it creating chances by running off the ball. And Adrian made a super run into that area, but unfortunately his execution or the finish of the score was not as good as it should be. Messing has made five saves, as you see. Hammond has not had to make one here in the second half. He's been saved a couple other ways, however. Comes out here and takes the attempted centering pass. It was over the head of Pelé. Cosmos have been averaging 30 shots a game this year, and yet they're averaging only two goals a game. It's the highest number of shots a team has ever gotten for that many games, and certainly not near the highest number of goals. So they've had their problems, and it's not just bad luck. And they've got so many great players all having to adjust to each other. I suppose that could be a problem, too. Tony Field, look out. He got around his man. He's into the penalty box now. Nice individual effort by number seven, Tony Field. Drops the ball. Well, nobody there. Right to Rodney Marsh. Dmitrievich might have been there, but he looks to be still limping a bit. Here comes Wegerly. Wegerly moving in on the left wing side. Pushing the ball around. Moraes has a bit of an opening now. He shoots. And Messing dives to his left, covering the wide post that time. Wegerly has been a, uh, a sore thumb to the uh, Cosmos defense. He's dancing all over the place, and uh, consequently, Moraes is having a difficult time stopping him. Marsh with a nice steal now, but... Finally, Rodney does a bit of acting over there. Falls over as if he were practically killed, but no foul. Referee right on top of the play, and again, Tampa with another steal. Cosmos can't get it out of their own zone right now. Here they come, left wing side, Wes McLeod. He's into the penalty box, crossing ball, back door. Smithhurst right in front of the net, rebound, and they hit the They keep the ball in, another shot. Smithhurst again, wide open net for Marsh, and another save. And a handball, a handball in the penalty box on the New York Cosmos, and that means a penalty kick. That is the most serious foul, and let's see if we can pick it up. Okay, here we see on the replay all kinds of action around the goal here. Shep Messing making a super dive here to prevent a score. The ball is loose again. Peters, uh, Derek Smethers hits the crossbar, rebound again, and you'll see a shot on goal taken again and momentarily. Here it comes. And again, a great effort by Shep Messing. And finally, the ball is free again. Shot on goal. And here's where Bachenbauer makes a great save with his hands. He's become a goalkeeper as well. All right. They're looking at a man on the field right now. It is Shep Messing, the Cosmos trainer, out to look at him. I don't know if he got a, an errant 
foot or a knee or if he took a ball in the face. I think he took a ball in the face on that second shot. From Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. There's Franz Beckenbauer just called for the handball, and really that's all he could do in the play, but it happened in that penalty box, and any kind of a, a dangerous foul or a rather flag flagrant foul, such as a handball, in that penalty box calls for a penalty kick. You see them working on Shep Messing. Let's set this up a bit now. What's going to happen? The ball is set 12 yards straight on goal. The goalkeeper must set himself on the goal line, and he cannot move his feet until the ball has been kicked. In other words, it's almost a sure goal from 36 feet out. The goalkeeper has to cover 192 square feet. And what, what can a goalkeeper do to try and stop a penalty kick? Okay, there are several things he can do. He can just uh, stay on the goal line and try to outguess the, uh, uh, the kicker or the shooter, which is Rodney Marsh. The other thing he, he can do, he can commit, uh, commit himself and go to a corner and try to anticipate a shot in a certain corner. Uh, this is all he can do. He's actually helpless here. It's a very uh, difficult shot to save by a keeper. It's about a 99% uh, uh, percentage-wise uh, successful result uh, by the penalty kicker. There you see Pele talking to Messing. The Cosmos do have another goalkeeper, Errol Yassin, who has come onto the field now. And that may be all for Shep. There's Errol Yassin in the, the royal blue shirt there. Shep wants to stay in. He's a great competitor. Rodney Marsh is going to shoot the penalty kick. He's made two this year. He's two for two. And at this point, if he can score it, the Cosmos are just going to have to let it all hang loose, and whatever happens is going to happen. All right, Errol Yassin is into the ball game now, 6'1", 170. And again, he cannot move his feet until the ball has been kicked. It's a very lucky break if he can block one here. And Marsh will shoot it from 12 yards, so we're just about to go. If the ball is blocked in play, it is in play. It can be rebounded in. Or whatever, cleared out by the defense. Yes, true. If the, if the keeper knocks the ball away, then the, any of the Tampa Bay players could try to follow up and score. However, if it does hit the post, it doesn't count. Marsh comes in, shoots, scores! Well, Marsh came in, you talk about a little razzle-dazzle. He gave him a fake before he even got to the ball. Gave an outside fake to Yassine's left and put it into the right. Let's get a look at okay, it. Okay, here we see it again. Uh, Rodney shows his foot to the uh, left of the goalkeeper and then simply bends the ball in the opposite corner. This is the magic of uh, great players having that quality and composure to do that kind of stuff. The crowd today is 45,288 here. And that is the second largest crowd in the history of the league, regular season play. Just missing by, let's see, about 1,000. In fact, 900. The largest crowd ever to watch the Cosmos play in Minnesota last year. That's regular season crowd. Last year, they had 58,000-plus at the Kingdome in Seattle for an exhibition, and they had just short of 50,000 for the Minnesota Kicks' final home playoff game last year. That was quite a night. But this is, well, the second largest crowd in league history in the regular season. 4 nothing is the score. Here goes Pele. He drives in a saving tackle by Arsene Goose. John, this is where age comes in. Here's a youngster from Haiti who's only about 23 of age with a very strong tackle here on Pelé. Here's the replay. Uh, a ball has slipped through nicely. Pelé is going to rip a shot, but a beautiful sliding tackle by Auguste to block the ball for a corner kick. Beckenbauer on the right wing corner. Out in front, the head ball just wide left. They tried to get the ball on the weak side goalpost that time to Kinalia, who was lurking in the back door, but they just couldn't quite do it. Ramon Mifflin, the man who took the header. So again, the Cosmos have been thwarted. It's four to nothing, Tampa. Rodney Marsh with that goal, his fourth goal of the year. And he now has four goals and six assists, getting an assist as well in this ball game. And Marsh has moved into a tie for third place in league scoring with Paul Child of San Jose. Cosmos in the green shirts trailing four nothing with 23-20 left in the match. And Pelé puts it right on the foot of Ian Anderson, who leads it forward to Marsh. The Cosmos look tired, as well they might, trailing 4-0. Marsh, chip for Smethurst. Look out, Yassine comes 14 yards out of the goal mouth to grab it away from him. John, what's happening here is that uh, it is a bit hot here and warm, and the Cosmos have uh, really spent a lot of energy trying to get some goals, and unfortunately, they haven't been successful, and 
Tampa's playing very relaxed now. They're holding the ball. They're making uh, the Cosmos players uh, run more and work harder. Here goes Tony Field on a pass from Pele. He's knocked down in the penalty area. Nothing is called. Legal play by Arsene Auguste. The Cosmos don't think so. Referee said he went for the ball. He made contact with the man after making contact with the ball. Cosmos back on defense now. As here come the Tampa Bay Rowdies. This game seen in Germany and all over the world today, and the Rowdies certainly distinguishing themselves. And a bitter debut for Beckenbauer with Pelé and Kinalia. Here goes Wes McLeod. Now here comes Rodney Marsh. They're moving into the danger zone. They got Alston and Smethurst in front, but a nice tackle clears it away. Cosmos ball. A reminder to watch the 11th annual Victor Awards, the Academy Awards of Sports, on Saturday, June 25th. The top stars of the entertainment and sports worlds will all be there, so you'll be there too. Saturday, June 25th, exclusively on TVS. 21.45 left. The Cosmos a chance. Remember, even in a loss, you have a chance to score points in the standings. Here goes Pelé now, 25 yards out, but Auguste is there, knocks it down. Now Tony Field has it. Now Kinalia looking for an opening. Kinalia holding the ball. Egan all over him. Here's a full body shot. He scores! Tony Field! Nicely set up by Kinalia. And the first goal of the year for Field as you look at the Big Bear Kinalia. Okay, here's the replay. This is a classical play again. We've seen five fantastic goals. Super combination. Fields taken it out of the air into the far corner. And uh, Paul Hammond, the no keeper in the world, could save that job because it was first time a volley kick perfectly placed. And a great effort by Canalia setting him up on that serve. Well, is it too late? The Rowdies with a 4-0 lead, now 4-1. Perhaps a bit complacent, feeling they had it all wrapped up after the penalty kick. But if the Cosmos could get another one here, then who knows what could happen. John, if they get on the board at the Cosmos the next five minutes, then it still becomes a game because, uh, as I said, they're a very dangerous team. they got great players, and they can score any given moment. So they got to get on the board in another five minutes, and uh, they're still in there. Here comes Tampa Bay. On the left wing with the ball is Adrian Alston, and he fouls. He fouled Werner Roth. He backed into him, trying to submarine him. And the Cosmos get it. Here comes Beckenbauer. Well... They call him in Germany, West Germany, Kaiser Franz. He'll try to perform a miracle here for the Cosmos. But Adrian Alston, who's played against him before in 1974, before the world, makes a nice play to ride him off the ball. 20 minutes left in the match, 4-1, to the Rowdies. Three first-half goals, two by Weggerly, one by Ian Anderson. A penalty kick by Rodney Marsh in the second half. And Tony Field has just scored for the Cosmos to make it 4-1. to I'll tell you one thing, Eddie Fermani never predicted this score to his players. I, I know he was optimistic about this game, but certainly he didn't expect five goals from the Tampa Bay Rowdies. They've done a super job today, and it's just a credit to the coaching and fine players they have. The Cosmos lose this game, and Washington wins tonight in Rochester. The Diplomats will move ahead of the Cosmos, and, New, and well, the New York Ball Club will be in dead last place. So, well, they'll have a little time between this game and the next league game to get their act together. A lot of time left in the season to get back in the running. Here come the Rowdies now, straight down the middle. For the ball is Weggerly. Two goals today. Pass behind Alston. And the Cosmos get it. 19 minutes coming up on the scoreboard. Kinalia. Kinalia has had a miserable year thus far. Only three goals in the first nine games. Had 19 last year. Now into the attacking zone they come. And Auguste is called for a foul. He went right through Tony Field for the ball. No chance for the ball without going through the man. Obvious foul and a free kick for the Cosmos in the right wing corner. And Franz Beckenbauer in the bottom of your picture coming in to take the free kick. What happened here? August didn't play the ball. He played the man and he went directly to knock off Fields, which is a, a foul and, and rightfully so. Here Beckenbauer is going to take the free kick and he has a lot of ability to bend and spin balls. And here it comes one. He's bending one with the outside of the foot. Pelé and Kinalia and it's deflected by a Connell of Tampa. I believe, and it will be a corner kick for the Cosmos. In the left wing corner, they'll set it up. Out short it goes to Chris Hunt, or Steve Hunt, correct myself. Back in the left wing, Kinalia. They've got Dillon out in front with Pelé in the penalty area. Long ball. Here goes Dillon. Oh, nice save by Rodney Marsh. Pelé goes after it. Out to Beckenbauer. Drives, and a shot goes wide of the net. From Tampa, this 
is NASL Championship Soccer. I'm Miller with Walt Chisowitz here in Tampa, Florida. Big game today before a big crowd. The Cosmos in the green having their problems. All the big stars in this ball club have not been enough to fend off the hustling rowdy rowdies, I guess you'd say. And Tampa proving again that they're one of the class teams in the league without all the big superstar world-class names. Well, John, this is it. This is just uh, goes to prove how strong the league is now in 1977. Every team has competent players and quality players. And they can play against the best in the world. And certainly Tampa has proved it today that they can hang in with anyone. And they are now a dominating force in the NASL. Steal by Mifflin now. He starts it back into the Tampa zone. Drops it back. Cosmo started up. Here's Franz Beckenbauer. Very fine gentleman who speaks English rather well. Steve Hunt on the left wing, in across the 35. Danger zone, here's Field, got Kinalia in front. Tries to get it to Kinalia, but Egan is there to head it down. And Field lets it go out of bounds for a throw-in for the Cosmos. Now coming over to take it is Steve Hunt, number 11. 4-1, 15 to go. Cosmos still a chance to get some bonus points here, which you can move up in the standings even with a loss. Look out, here they come. Pass right out in front for Tony Field from Mifflin. But again, Auguste there to cover up and a corner kick coming up for the Cosmos. Quickly they take it without wasting time. Pele, Pele goes around a man. He's into the penalty area, he's tripped there. And again, the referee says, no, you were acting. Besides, the man got the ball, he tackled the ball. Yes. Cosmos with a quick counter attack, look out. Here goes Weggerly. He's got Alston on the left wing along with Smethurst. Four Smethurst over his head, out of bounds, Cosmos ball. John, I got to think that uh, it's a tribute to Eddie Fermani and his game plan. Whether it was by design, I'm sure it was. What has happened, they said, to let's go around Beckenbauer, let's go around to the wings, let's go to Wagerly, let's play from the sides and attack that way. And certainly they've done this today. Most of their goals came from the side on serves or shots, and Beckenbauer couldn't do much to prevent those. Tony Field now, right wing corner, Auguste, just back after six weeks on the injured list. He deflects the ball over the end line. Corner kick, Cosmos, right wing corner. Cosmos keeping some pressure on, and that... Danger zone down there, the attacking zone. Field, short ball, Franz Beckenbauer, penalty box. Beckenbauer, lateral move. Back door for Pelé, over his head, and Pelé can't get to it. The two great superstars miss connections, and there's sort of a, a picture of the day, I suppose, for the Cosmos. John, it's uh, almost impossible to make connections only in five days of practice. I'm sure that in the future, next few weeks to come, you'll see a lot of exciting stuff from those two great players. Well, the fans in New York wondering when Beckenbauer and company would make their debut. The Cosmos with Beckenbauer for the first time in New York on a Wednesday at the Meadowlands at 9 o'clock start. An exhibition game with Lazio of Rome. That's Kinalia's former team. That'll be a 9 o'clock start on Wednesday. And we urge you to check your sports pages for the time and location of the game in your town. Look out, Pele, back door, but... Wes McLeod, the Canadian national there to head it away from him and set up another Cosmos corner kick. Paul Hunter's into the ball game now. Number 26 for the Cosmos. Hunter, an American player. Here's the ball right out in front, knocked down. The goalkeeper, Hammond, was out to spike it down. And here comes Rodney Marsh out with the ball. And Marsh is tripped by Werner Roth. He goes down hard. This, this play, I, I think, would uh, caution a, a, a yellow card, and I can see it happening now. Yes, the referee has his uh, yellow card out, and Warner is going to receive one. Uh, rightfully so. It's a play from behind. He had no intention of playing the ball. He just wanted to take the player down. A yellow card in soccer is similar to a technical foul in basketball. You get another one, you're out of the ball game. There's an automatic fine incurred, and you add up a few of those over the course of a season, you have to sit out a one-game suspension. So a yellow card, uh, a serious warning from the official that you do that again, I'm sending you home. Don't talk about yellow cards. Our national team got a few, and uh, certainly was a bit of a problem to us, and hopefully our American kids will avoid that in the future. Uh-oh, Rodney Marsh all alone, onside, left wing, danger zone, crossing ball on the ground, it's cleared over the end line. They had Smethurst in front, 12 yards from the goal, and they had Alston coming in for the back door, as you look at Errol Yassin. Paul Hunter is from Connecticut. And uh, he was born in Toronto and is a Canadian season, uh, uh, a citizen, but played college ball at the University of Connecticut. Here's Smethurst, knocks it down in front, shot by Alston, goes left to the net. 
Goal kick for the Cosmos. Yes, Paul Hunter is a, a four-year player for the University of Connecticut under Joe Marone. In fact, his son, uh, Joe Marone Jr., is now a member of our National Olympic team. So you know that Paul has got some good coaching, and that's why he's here in the lineup for the Cosmos. Werner Raw starts it ahead into the zone. Now, here comes Hunt, left wing. That's Tony Field who scored the goal. Back to Hunt, open for 22 yards. Drops it to Mifflin. He's open for 22. And his shot slices off wide right of the goal. And another Tampa goal kick. That's not the play. Raymond should have gone to Pelé, who's standing wide and begging for the ball. But apparently Raymond missed it, so the shot went on straight. The Cosmos' next home game will be next Sunday against Toronto. And, well, with the being in the toughest division, the Cosmos are going to have to start winning at home. They've lost three or five games at home. Here goes Pelé, foot race after the ball, but Paul Hammond, the big live goalkeeper, 12 yards out of the nets to grab it away from him. Paul's doing a super job. He's reading the game well. He's coming out, intercepting all the through balls that Beckenbauer has uh, messaged to or sent to uh, Canale or Pelé. So it's a super job for Paul Hammond in reading the penalty area. Here goes Smithhurst. Look out. He's beyond Hunter, but he loses the ball, and Hunter able to ride it away from him into the goalkeeper. Smithhurst would love to get a goal. He's tied with Steve David of Los Angeles right now for first place in the league. We go back and forth across the field here. Now Hammond rolls it out on the attack. Four to one. The Tampa Bay Rowdies leading the Cosmos. Fort Lauderdale also playing today in Vancouver a little bit later on. And Fort Lauderdale a chance to move into second place. And Washington at Rochester tonight a chance to move into third place. 10-10 left in the match. Tampa trying to add a fifth goal. Rodney Marsh, who's had a goal and an assist. Number 10, moving straight down the middle. Pass ahead for Smethurst. Intercepted nicely. Good anticipation. Now here comes Mifflin. Number 15 came in at the start of the second half. Mifflin double team. Still looking for an opening. Now swings it out to Franz Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer into Tampa area. Across the 35-yard line, Nelson Moraes moving in on Stewart jump into the danger zone. Drives, takes a shot, but he misses the net high and wide. From Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. John Miller with Walt Chisowitz, and the Cosmos have a goal kick as we come back, and the Rowdies during the break have brought David Robb, number five, into the ball game, replacing Steve Weggerly, who leads with two goals, his best game in America. Robb, 5'11", 172, uh, a uh, fine forward player from Scotland. Four to one, eight and a half minutes to go. Franz Beckenbauer ahead to Kinalia across the 35. He's got Pele in the middle. There is Pele, number 10. He tries a looping shot from 34 yards out. Easy save for Hammond. This is a smart move by Coach Vermont. placing Dave Robb into this game. He wants to get him acquainted with the American fan, the American fields, and the American climate. So he has about 10 minutes to get adjusted, and I think he's counting on Dave to, to be in the starting lineup in the future for Tampa. Here's Alston alone in the left wing corner. He's got Smethurst in front. Tries to beat the man down there, Dillon. And I think he intended to take a shot there. It didn't loft it like a centering pass, and uh, he missed everything. Missed kicked the ball, and it will be a Cosmos ball in the penalty area. One word, Walt. Uh, you have a ball game coming up, uh, I guess, for your national team on Sunday, June 5th in Chicago. John, we got a super big game coming up with our U.S. national team against West Germany in Chicago at Soldiers Field. We're all excited about it because it'll be a great learning experience for our players, and we just hope to give them a lot of competition, and we feel we can, and this is a great uh, experience for all of us. Well, we wish you well. Thank you, John. Two weeks after that, we'll see you in Minnesota, Los Angeles. I'll be at there. At Minnesota, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central. And we hope you'll be able to join us for that one because it's going to be a wild, explosive ball game. Last year at Minnesota, L.A. was beaten 6-3. to three. Look out, here's Smethurst. Now here's David Robb. First time in the danger zone. Tries to loft it in front, but it goes wide. Hits the side of the net. And from Tampa, this is NASL Championship Soccer. Tampa with the ball in its own zone as they lead 4-1 to one with 5.45 left to the match. Rondi Marsh who uh, would have to get strong consideration in my mind as the offensive player of the game. Although Steve Weggerly with two goals and those two great individual efforts, I think is gonna beat him out here today it's a for that up. honor. It's a toss up, John, between the two. Rodney Marsh has done a super job in the middle of the field, dictating, controlling, as predicted before the match. But Weggerly certainly was the exciting player. He got the key goals to put them on board and uh, it's a toss up. I would have to vote for Weggerly. 
All right, 5.20 to go in the match. 4-1 to one, Co uh, Cosmos Trail. Here goes Hunt in front. Kenalia, head ball. Oh, just wide again. Kenalia was right there. And you look at him get up. Another frustrating play in a frustrating season. And he tries to help Arsena Gustav. Yeah, we see this play on replay again. And uh, again, the 1977 season for Kenalia has not been the best. Here, a super effort again. He climbs above the post and by the post again. And that's the history of his game, 1977. He must have missed now by now at least 30 of those chances. And it's very unfortunate for Giorgio. Well, it certainly seems like 30 to, to Kenalia, I'm sure. 4.47 to go, and they're going to stop the clock here and go out and have a look at Auguste. Remember, he had a bad ankle. He'd missed six weeks of play here. His first game back, and they said that earlier in the week in practice he was even limping. So he may have come down at an odd angle after going up for the head ball that time and twisted it. They're out to look at it right now. I think it's a uh, muscle cramp. I see the trainer working on his uh, gastric anemia muscle, and he's stretching it, trying to relax it uh, by doing a little bit of massaging there. So uh, with the heat and uh, the loss of uh, uh, fluids in the body, this can happen very frequently to players. I'm a bit surprised that... Uh, at, uh, uh, the uh, Oku's doing that because he's used to this kind of condition in Haiti. This is all you can see is 90 degrees, 100 degrees. But he's been out of action for six weeks, so that could be very possible, and it did happen to him. The Cosmos, with a nine-point victory, apparently well in hand. Again, six points for the win, and their first three goals being counted toward that point total. We'll have 63 points after today. Fort Lauderdale with 49 plays an important game at Vancouver tonight. Washington with 41 plays an important game at Rochester tonight. And then next Saturday night, another showdown here in the East. We've had one today. The other two teams fighting it out in the East, Fort Lauderdale and Washington, will meet at RFK Stadium in Washington Saturday night. Rodney Marsh knocking one down and a foul call on Rodney. I think he was too close to the ball that time. You've got to be 10 yards back. That's exactly right, John. He must get 10 yards. Marsh, ooh, very nearly a handball call there, but he hit it with the elbow. Here's Pelé, head ball on the net, he scores! Wait a minute, the linesman raised his flag. The linesman on the near side raised his flag, and I think they're going to say the Cosmos had an offside. Pelé will argue the call, as you see. We'll get a look at it here, Walt. Let's have a look. Uh, it's very difficult to talk from this angle what happened here, but it's a fantastic serve by Steve Hunt. Puts the ball across, and Pelé with that ability to climb in the air. A vertical jump above any athlete. And look at the... Every point helps in the long run, so there's a reason to go out and get a goal, even though they're trailing 4-1. to one. Pelé chips cross field on the left wing. Ramon Mifflin there. Knocks it down to Hunt in front. Oh, he drops the ball. Comes to Beckenbauer. His shot knocked down. Beckenbauer follows it in. He scores! Well, Kaiser Franz, number six, in his first game. On a rebound, following his own shot in. And it's 4-2 to two with two minutes left. on the replay again and I'm very happy for Beckenbauer a super shot deflection by a defender here and he comes through again with a with a shot to the far post Paul Hammond almost got it away but this time luck prevailed and they did get a goal great effort by Beckenbauer coming from the back Lock running a minute 40 left and the Cosmos well one more goal give them another bonus point here so they're still incentive all right four to two we've had a wild one today in Tampa here comes Beckenbauer again across the midfield line He's got Mifflin on the right wing. He's got Pelé in front of him. Leads the ball ahead. Now Pelé has it. 20 yards from the goal. He tries to thread the needle with a pass to Kinalia, but Auguste is there to knock it down. Pelé goes after the ball with McLeod, and Pelé falls over. Looked like he tried to shove McLeod out of the way, and McLeod was a rock. Well, Pelé's 35, and uh, he's trying to take a few shortcuts. It's very difficult here's to, to hang in there. Here's McLeod right on to Yassine. I think there it was called the offsides there, yes. They took that away. John, I just want to say that uh, we talk about scoring in soccer and the American fan always saying the lack of scoring. That's not so. If you have quality players, goals will come. And this is a perfect example today. Two top teams, great athletes on the field, creating all kinds of chances. Shots on goal, deflection saves. Everything's happening here today. Cosmos moving into the danger zone again with 35 seconds at penalty area. And I'm sure if you've been with us throughout the day, you know how dangerous it is for the defense and that offense gets that close to the goal. Just about everything's been scored from close in in this ball game. 
Rowdies with a free kick in their own zone as time ticks down. As you see, this one just about over. The Rowdies, all alone at, in first place, will await the report from Vancouver tonight to see how Fort Lauderdale did. They could lead by two if Fort Lauderdale loses. Crowd counts down the time. The referee blows the whistle. It's all over, and Tampa has beaten the Cosmos four to two. John Miller for Walt Chisowitz. Good night from Tampa, Florida. Promotional consideration by Turtle Wax, the world's largest selling liquid car wax. New improved hard shell formula. Cleans, polishes, protects in one easy operation. Turtle Wax with the hard shell finish. is the TBS Television Network.